In the last video, we captured the five elements we need uh, for our currency conversion process. Now we will start building the action pages. First, we will create an action page to launch the site. So I will right click action one, click rename, type launch, and click OK. Then we will drag and drop a navigate stage, double click on it, rename as launch, and drag and drop this XC currency converter. Select the action launch and click OK. Then I'll link these stages. Now let's run this and see if it works. I'll click reset and go. OK, so the application is launched successfully. Now we will create the action page for entering the input value. So I will right click, click new, name it as enter input value and click OK. In this stage we are going to input a value which means we are going to write a value into the input text field. So we will drag and drop the right stage, double click, name it as enter input value. Now we have all the elements that we captured on the right hand side. So we will drag and drop input value here under element. Then we need to mention the value that has to be written into the input value fields. For now, we will just give 200 and click OK. I'll link the stages, click Reset and Go. And if I go to the web page, you can see that the value 200 is entered. Now, entering a static value like this in the right stage does not help us. We should be able to pass the value from the process through the input parameters of this action. In order to do that, we will double click start, click add to add an input parameter, and I'll name it as input value. Then select the data type as number, and I'll click this button to create a data item. I'll then click OK. Now I'll double click this right stage, delete this value, uh, drag and drop the input value data item, then click OK. Let's test this. I'll double click input value and set the initial value as 500. Click OK. Reset and I'll click Go. OK, the value is entered successfully. I'll again open this and clear the initial and current values. Next, we will create an action page for entering the from currency. So I'll right click, click New. Name it as enter from currency and click OK. Again, I'll drag and drop the right stage, then link the stages. Let's set up the input parameter right away. So I will double click start, click add. I'll name it as from currency, set the data type as text and click this icon to create the data item. Then click OK. Now double click the right stage, drag and drop from currency element into the element field and drag and drop the from currency data item into the value field. Then rename the stage as enter from currency and click OK. Now let's test it. Double click the data item and we will set the value as say AED. Now, if you notice, I didn't use the double quotes, though I'm typing a text. That is because we need to mention double quotes only inside an expression, which you can see here. This little icon, which looks like a calculator, and when you click this button, you can see it goes into the expression editor. But if you go back to the data item, we are typing inside a text editor, which is denoted by this little icon that has two dots. And if you click this, it opens in a text editor, which could be a multi-line or a single line editor. So if you put double quotes in a text editor, it will also consider the quotes as a normal text. This means if you want to pass the double quotes character, you can type it inside a text data item. So let me show you what this means. I will add the double quotes, click OK, reset and go. 
Now, if you see here, the double quotes came along with AED. So that's the reason we don't have to provide double quotes when entering a value in data item of text type. Okay, so let's clear the value. Next, we will create an action page for entering the two currencies. So I will right click, click new, name it as enter to currency and click OK. Now drag and drop a right stage, link the stages, double click the start, click add, name it as to currency, save the data type as text and create the data item. Click OK, then double click the right stage. I'll drag and drop to currency element and the to currency data item. Rename it as enter to currency. Click OK and let's test it. OK, so it works fine. I'll clear the data item. Then we will create the action page for the go button. I'll right click, new, name it as click go and click OK. Now we will drag and drop the navigate stage as we need to click a button and double click the navigate stage, drag and drop the go button into the element and select the action, click center. I'll rename the stage to click and click OK. Then link the stages, click reset and go. OK, the button got clicked and it loaded to the result page. Finally, we need to write an action page to read this result. So I will right click, new, I'll name it as get result, click OK. Now drag and drop the read stage, then double click and OK. In the last video when we created this element I forgot to rename it. So let's rename that first. So I'll cancel this, click application modeler, select the element and I will name it as say result click apply and OK. Now I will double click the reader stage, drag and drop result into the element and from the drop down I will select get current value. Note that it also chose the data type automatically. Now when it gets the current value it should be stored in a data item. So we need to mention the name of the data item here but we haven't created one yet. So we will create one by simply typing the name of the data item and click this icon and the data item is created automatically. I'll rename the stage to read result and click OK. Now we will link the stages then reset and go. OK, so it successfully read the value and stored it in the data item. But there is one more step pending. If you have to pass this result to the process, we need to send this result as an output of this action. In order to do that, double click end, click add to add an output, drag and drop result data item into this field which says get value from and you can see that the data type is automatically selected. Then give a name for the output. I will give it as result. Click OK and we are done. Now we have all the actions required to create the process. I will publish all the pages so that it becomes available in the process studio. Then save the process. Alright, in the next video we will create an interesting process using all these actions.